All right, joining me now here on the MMA Report on Radio Influence, man's going to be a part of Bellator 184 coming Friday night, October the 6th. He takes on Carrington Banks as Steve Cazola, who is coming off that 28-second win at Bellator 175. Steve, is that the highlight of your career at this point that night with it being in Chicago and how quick it happened? Hey, Jason. Well, first of all, thank you for having me. I really appreciate it. And, uh, you know, th- it, it's definitely up there, man. I've had a lot of amazing moments in this, you know, career, even, you know, as short as it is. But, man, going back home and being at Chicago, being on the main card and getting a quick, devastating knockout and being 100% healthy and ready to go, I mean, it doesn't get much better than that. So it's definitely up there. So, of course, it's been a couple of months since that, that fight took place. Was it Was it right back into the gym, or, or did you take some kind of time off to just – let the body kind of uh, get back to where it needed to be. I mean, I usually, you know, I try to take a week off, but you know, it's gotten always shorter and shorter. I mean, with a great performance like that and coming out healthy, I mean, you know, I want to get back to getting better as soon as humanly possible in the gym. You know, during that time where I'm out of the gym, I always work on my mind, you know, reading my books, listening to my podcasts, audio books, you know, meditating. So during that time, I'll really just, you know, go get right back to growing my mind, growing my spirit. And then when it's time to get back to hard work as far as physical activity in the gym and the body's all 100% healed up from training camp, and then we'll get right back in there and uh, get going as soon as humanly possible. I love what I do. Uh, I love being in the gym. I work in the gym. I train in the gym. I live in the gym. So uh, always a pleasure to be in there. When you have that, that off time from a fight, do you, do you find yourself maybe – watching other fights and maybe trying to work on the on the mental side of the game of maybe trying to to see what other guys what they're doing and how you can incorporate into your own game absolutely i mean you gotta look at the best in the world and see why are they the best in the world what is it about their personality what is it about their skill set you know whether it's their striking their grappling their takedowns what really separates them from the pack as being one of the best in the best and i'm always looking to evaluate and kind of break down and see what's uh, what would be best for me? What's something that I can kind of take and mold to myself? You know, what is it about their personality that we share that I can use that they're using, you know, maybe utilizing better than me? What is it about their striking, their wrestling, their uh, jujitsu that, you know, that I see them like, wow, that's really effective. That's really useful. Is that, can I work that in my game? I'll visualize it. I'll try it in practice. I'll talk to my coach. He's like, Hey, you know, I saw this. What do you think about this? And uh, I mean, it's a constant analyst and evaluation of always trying to get better. This matchup, I think, is uh, the way people are talking about it, kind of the same way you had the matchup with Jake Roberts. They're talking, hey, these two rising prospects in the Bellator lightweight division, Carrington Banks, just like yourself, undefeated. But for you, is this a totally different matchup? It is. Everyone's, everyone's different. I mean, we do share a similar opponent in Jake, and – you know, their backgrounds were similar as far as like being, you know, a wrestler and everything like that. But I do think that Carrington is a, you know, is, that being said, he is a different person. He is a different fighter. He has a more, you know, defined uh, skill set, especially in the wrestling. He's more credentialed in the wrestling. And he definitely prefers to uh, grind opponents out and try to and steal fights. And, you know, that's okay. We've made our proper adjustments. We've done the preparation that is needed to uh, beat him in every, you know, every aspect, whether it's striking, grappling, and uh, we're going to get a finish, whether it be in the first, second, or third round. It's going to be my night. It's going to be my victory, and it's going to be on to the next. What is the key in not getting into a grinding type fight? Is it more of just imposing your will? Is it, is it as simple as that? Absolutely. I mean, you got to go in there respecting the opponent in all areas, whether it be their strength or weakness. You never take anyone lightly. That's the first priority. But you always got to establish what you want to do. What is your game plan? What, you know, establish the distance that you want to establish, establish the tempo, establish the pace, and anything that they try to do, making sure you got your, uh, you know, P's and Q's on point. You're ready to counter. You're ready to react and adjust. And, uh, you know, make sure you're going in for that finish, man, because I'm not the type of person that's going into just, you know, skate on by. I don't train to compete. I train to dominate, and that's what I've been showing in my fights. You're a guy, every, I mean, all your wins are, are coming by finish. You've never even made it to the third round. Is there all part of you that wants to have a 15-minute a type war where you and, your, you and your opponent just go at it for 15 minutes? Or is it like, nah, man, I, I'm just trying to get, down the, get, in, get in and out of there as quick as possible? Uh, there's no appeal to it. Because again, like I just said, I don't train to compete. I train to dominate. And I want to show these guys that they're not on my level and that I can, and that I'm a finisher, you know, uh, and, and plus, you know, 15 minutes of a grinding fight, you know, that puts a lot of wear and tear on your, on your body. It could potentially put, you know, some damage to your brain. Um, you know, the longer you're in there, it's like gambling, the more you like, you know, you're not going to walk out of there any better than you walked in. That's for sure. So I'm trying to get in there 
uh, finish the fight in devastating fashion, whether it be striking or a submission. And, you know, you get paid the same, whether it's uh, 28 seconds or 15 minutes. So I'm just trying to go, go in there, assert my dominance, cash my check, and go uh, hang out with my family. A lightweight division is a stacked division in Bellator. We're just coming off that car where, you know, you had um, Patricky and Benson, uh, you know, and, and people will look at you, and, and I think they're still going to call you a prospect. I don't know whether you, you like that term or not, but where, where do you think you are right now in this 155-pound division? I think I'm the best, in all honesty. I really know I can be champion at this point in time. I know I can beat anyone in the top five, top ten, whatever they want to give me. It's just that they, you know, based upon my record and uh, how many fights I've had from, that's, this is where they're uh, assuming I'm at. But with each, you know, opportunity presents a new opportunity for myself to go in there and insert my dominance and show them like, hey, you know, if you pay me and, you know, pay me the right money, I'll fight all these top names and and show that I'm one of the best 155 pounders in the world. In terms of Carrington, um, you know, they talk about stylistically why you you love a matchup. Is there something in particular about this this fight of, of why you just love this matchup or is it? Part of it is just like, hey, I believe this is the toughest guy that I've ever stepped into uh, the cage with on fight night. You know, the next guy is always the toughest guy in my mind in uh, all aspects, and that's what keeps me motivated in training. You know, I don't, you don't take anyone lightly in any certain aspect. So although he's primarily a wrestler and, you know, although he has technically less fights than, you know, someone like Jake Roberts, even though it's just by, you know, a small margin – you know, you don't get you don't get ahead of yourself or get cocky anywhere. I always prepare like I'm going up against the best in the world because anybody can beat anyone on any given day. So I go in there, put myself in the best position possible to go in there and uh, get get a victory. And it doesn't matter if it's uh, standing, I'm ready. Wrestling, I'm ready. Jiu-jitsu, I'm ready. And I'm just going to show that gap of where, you know, everyone perceives me to be as a contender and where I know I'm at, which is championship level. I did see on your social media, you're, you're selling your shirts, not just men's shirts, but also uh, female shirts. So where can my listeners go out and support you by buying your shirt? Uh, clinchgear.com. You know, shout out to Clinchgear. They've been my clothing sponsor since my beginning of my Bellator career. They've always been there for me, helping me out. And, uh, you know, no matter what. So, you know, clinchgear.com, Jeff and Greg Brady, thank you guys so much for everything that, you know, all their support and everything they've done for me. Uh, check them out. They sell, you know, some the, the best uh, workout apparel, you know, a, a, out there. So uh, definitely clinchgear is a place to be. You mentioned about, hey, I'm going out there to get the finish. I'm going out there to be dominant. Is there ever a preferred method of whether it's knockout or submission? Absolutely not. You know, the knockout's just been the one that's been occurring the most frequently lately, which is awesome. It's something that even the uh, most mediocre fan can understand is, you know, throwing hands and putting someone unconscious. But, you know, I love jujitsu. I've been improving my jujitsu so much thanks to uh, 10th Planet Jiu-Jitsu in uh, Oceanside with uh, Gio Martinez and all the 10th Planet freaks. So if there's an opening where I can finish the fight by submission, guarantee I'm going to take it. Did, did your love of jujitsu take some time or was it instant? My love for martial arts has always been instant. I just had a background in striking at first. I did Taekwondo when I was younger and received my black belt at a young age. And once I got back into the, you know, mixed martial arts, I got in, uh, you know, at 19 years old and I started doing everything, striking, wrestling, jujitsu, all at one. And I fell in love with it as a whole, you know, and, and I think that's what's going to also separate here is that, you know, I'm not just partial to just one aspect or just love and focus on one aspect. I focus on everything and looking to get in, improve and get better at everything. And, of course, everyone's going to be able to see your fight coming up on Friday night, October the 6th, Bellator 184, as uh, you are taking on Carrington Bank. Steve, I really appreciate your time. And let everyone know where they can follow you out on social media. Well, thank you so much for the time. Really appreciate it. You can follow me on Twitter and on Instagram at Steve Cazola MMA. Thank you so much to all my sponsors, my family, my teammates, my coaches for all your support. And uh, tune in October 6th to meet at my ninth finish in a row.